Okay, regular viewers, we're back. And I'm very excited about this week's project. As I've stated in the past, I clearly have a problem with swim jigs. Is that too many? Yes. That's too many. And I always want to buy more. Do I need to be buying more? Definitely not. Definitely not. It's probably not responsible to my family to be purchasing more jigs at this point. And not just swim jigs, all sorts of jigs. I got, I got Bitsy Bugs. I got my chatter baits in here. I got uh, jigs with rattles in them, if you can hear that. Uh, there's some other ones with rattles. Um, all sorts of flipping jigs. Just, there's just too many. But it's never the right one. I'm always looking for the right one. So this week, I'm going to show you, I think, how I overcame that hurdle. I have wanted uh, a jig that has a very thin head um, that, like, you know, of course, because it's me, it looks like a shad, right? So I have spent this week making a prototype and making a mold of that prototype with our friends, Plaster of Paris, of course. But um, these are the three prototypes I made. I did, uh, I did a red uh, kind of craw here. Um, actually got, you know, had some fun painting there. It got some little stripes on his little face. So these are still rough. Uh, they're not, uh, they're not perfect, but I was impressed with how easy it was to do guys. So you can definitely do this one yourself for sure. So I don't know why I keep dropping that, but, um, I, I feel like I, I messed up on this prototype. The hook I was using was, uh, some hooks I had laying around. Um, and it's just, this is a soft plastic, so like a worm hook, Texas rig work hook. Um, I wanted to use it because I thought that this little crook in the hook would keep it from rotating in the lead. Um, but this is probably a little too aggressively bent down for that orientation. As you can see with the, with the, where the hook is setting in relation to the weed guard here, um, this is probably going to be too weedless. So, um, but I'll try them out. I might have to tweak the hook point up, but like I said, these were prototypes. This is the mold I made of that. I would love to show you the mold master. But uh, the regular guy misplaced it somewhere in this regular disorganized shop. But and now it only exists in the magic of film. This is the mold master here. Um, it was easy. You set the hook in. Or, there you go, like so. And then I was using was using a nail um, as the pin to uh, for the uh, for where the weed guard was going. I purchased online uh, eBay. I found these uh, these fiber weed guards. Uh, they were they were fairly inexpensive, not terrible, but way cheaper than than jigs. And um, you know, I made some little holes in here, like if I was trying to put in a um, a wire uh, to retain your plastic, as you can see right there. Yep. And um, but again, plaster Paris very easy to carve. I was able to carve in. Uh, I'll just try to use a little pointer here. I was able to carve in um, these little slots that uh, catch your your skirt. So uh, these skirts are held on fairly good, fairly well, and um, you know, all in all, it kind of looked uh, kind of looked nice there. So you got to really kind of push those dogs off of there. To whoops, there we go. Before they're going to start sliding off. So, but it's got this retention hook at the end, so the whole thing's going to hold itself together pretty well. So, all in all, I was impressed with how they came out, and I was impressed with how easy it was. Uh, the one pro tip is though, once we make this mold. You really have to make sure that it is dry before you pour hot molten lead into something that's wet. So um, I definitely got some sputtering and gurgling and bubbling when I was uh, when I was trying to hurry. But yeah, uh, just goes together like that. Clamps together. Pour the lead down there. Fills it in. Zap, zap, do. As soon as it's cool, you got yourself a jig. So I'm going to show you the process of how we got there. So for this week's project, we're just going to need some simple things. A popsicle stick. And I have my super glue and baking soda, and I have my little crab meat uh, baking soda spoon that I use. We got our little uh, tiny drip tip for our super glue, and then uh, some various cutting and grabbing instruments here. So um, I had already taken the liberty for you of uh, cutting out my little shapes that I was going to try and use on my hook here. Cut out some little triangles and some little half circles and that's not a half circle. I don't know what shape that would be, but this this shape here. I did get a different hook. I purchased some, I know I purchased, but uh, these are fairly inexpensive. Bass Pro Shops brand, 5-aught hook right here. 
straight shank because looking at some of the jigs that I do have that I did want to kind of replicate this guy here is a chatterbait that I had purchased on the Amazons and um, it's been well worn as you can see it's lost eyeballs and paint and all that other stuff and I was like well you know I can make this weedless pretty easily and make a mold of this guy by just like super gluing a little uh, nail to the head like so after of course after you strip off all these parts and uh, just make a mold of that super easy right but where's the fun in that so we are going to try and make one ourselves so let's take our nice heavy duty straight shanked five out hook and i have a nail uh again this is the other half of the nail that i cut uh, the one that's actually going to get used in the mold is the pointy bit right like so um and we are just going to sort of piece this little guy together. Let me get some gloves on because that super glue is not fun to get off your hands. And I have to work tomorrow at my regular job. And I don't want to have super glue paws. Oh, I'm probably going to need a healthy dose of super glue accelerator as well. And maybe just for funsies, we'll use our uh, gel control super glue. I need like a little vice, I think, to hold all this together. Because basically, I need to squirt this with the super glue accelerator. Hmm. Let's get a little vice. It's good that that worked, because my little clamp did not work. Good. Finally. I think these are the triangles I decided on. And we're going to shape this. This is not going to be like a final shape thing here. This is a basic shape with what we're going to do here. What I've done here is we have glued on this. This is, again, this is going to represent where the weed guard is going to go in the, uh, in the final lure. And this is going to also act as our void in the lead so that we can place our weed guard in it afterwards. Okay, you can't obviously pour hot lead over a fiber plastic uh, weed guard. It'll just melt it. So, um, so this is now glued on. I filled in a little bit of this void over here with some baking soda as well. And then we're going to take this side of the triangle here, and we're going to glue it on that side as well. Okay. You can spray it with the accelerator on the side you want to stick. Press it right down on that glue. Hopefully get it right the first time. All right. So now I'm going to fill in these voids here with baking soda. And then we're going to uh, begin the process of shaping this. Okay. So we've got it filled in pretty well with some baking soda and super glue there. Our pin is in. Uh, we've got our pieces on the side. But like I said, we are going to shape this down. And shave it down because if we were just to cast this right now as a mold, well, first of all, it's not exactly square, but B and two, uh, this would probably be about an ounce of lead. And we want something around a quarter ounce, maybe a little more. These ones over here uh, turned out to be, I think, about three eighths ounces where we were at. So they got a little heavier than we planned. And thank you again for everybody who stuck with me here and commented and just encouraged me to keep on. Uh, doing this. I appreciate it because it is a lot of work. So I appreciate everybody that hits the subscribe button and the like button. We are uh, at just over 400. We'd like to get to 500. It would be a real nice goal uh, before Christmas. You know, just keep on growing the channel from there and just see what we can do with it. So, but again, I do appreciate everybody's support thus far. It's been really tremendous. I didn't think anybody would be interested in, uh, some rude guy in his garage you know showing how cheap he is so thank you very much for everybody and again like i did the glitter one uh, with the nail polish with my wife there helped me out tremendously when my back was hurt that was a viewer asked for that so if you got suggestions of things you want me to do or want me to try or demonstrate or something like that just let me know down in the comments here and uh i'll certainly 
do my darndest to try and help you out. All right. I already see a problem that I did. This um, is not this hook's not coming out the middle anymore. It's kind of drifted over to one side here. So we're gonna work on that, <clears throat> especially in the final shaping there. It may take a couple versions before I get this right, before I get one that I'm happy with, but that's the general gist of it. And um, yeah, I've got to put that hard as a rock on there. And I didn't even notice that the hook was not straight on. So I'm going to build up this side over here. I keep looking at this like I'm going to maybe put another piece on to build it up. But uh, And I'll get back with you and let you know how that looks, all right? Close in enough shape here. Um, I did want it very thin. And I think we've accomplished that. I got to fill this void in over here, and I want to build up just a little bit more around where this pin is going to go. Um, you can see it's kind of exposed right now, but that's okay. We're going to build up around it and reshape that. But we've taken off a lot of the meat that we put on there. Like I told you, it was a lot. Uh, you know, a lot of it wasn't going to make the uh, the final cut there. So I don't think it's too bad. But uh, we'll move back over to the other bench and kind of build it back up. Okay, back with the baking soda and super glue. I'm going to just keep putting it over here, regular guy. Again, guys, good to do this in a well-ventilated area. Uh, it's kind of some noxious-looking fumes that come off of this when you add these two, combine these two chemicals here, the super glue and the baking soda. And again, if anybody tries any of this stuff here on my channel, if you make uh, any of these lures or try to make them or make them better, which you probably do, some of the comments I've got, uh, again, have been very encouraging. That people said that they're going to try it. Uh, some of the people explain how they do it. I'd love to see some of the photos. So I'm not like super techno savvy. One of my regular and most loyal viewers uh, tried to send me some on the Instagrams, which uh, my regular editor has set up. And I didn't know how to do that um, or receive them or, or whatever. But we do have an email account set up for this channel. And my lovely, talented, and regular editor will hopefully put it right down here at the bottom for your viewing pleasure. And feel free to send those uh, pictures of the, the lures that you made. And we'll include them here on like an intro of the channel, outro, whatever you call those, tros. Um, to show what you guys are doing and showing off and stuff like that so um because i am not the end-all be-all of lure making i'm doing this again to show you guys that you guys can do this yourselves with minimal tools and minimal money and get some pretty uh snazzy results and catch some fish on some homemade things so that again is the point of regular guy lures is because any regular person can make their own snazzy fishing equipment without having to spend a ton of loot so go price out those uh glide baits if you've never fished with one before that uh my uh regular assistant and i eldest regular assistant and i made that'll knock your socks off go over to tackle warehouse and uh they get you can like look from most expensive to least expensive yeah when you're looking at two grand for a fishing lure a fishing lure that doesn't come with fish already or a boat <laughs> you know um that's some pretty heavy duty stuff right there and i can't can't do it as i said okay so i know it looks like we've built this up a lot you know but again this is the process just like filling in body panels on a car sand it down fill it up sand it down fill it up so that you can get to that shape that you're looking for so now we got to let that uh, dry for a little bit before we go <clears throat> bananas on it again. It's looking pretty good. So we're going to let that dry, and then we'll go back over to the sanding. All right. Okay, regular viewer, so I am done the sanding process. I actually used the uh, Dremel here, or I'm sorry, the rotary tool. Uh, yeah, I don't have a Dremel. i got a knockoff. But anyway, and I got in here uh, with that guy and uh, kind of carved out these little edges right here to take out some mass from it and then I took it and rotored around this way to make a uh, holder for the skirt 
sorry, it keeps hitting the camera here. It's hanging up uh, this way, and I got the little, you know, little dentist tool part of it right over here. So anyway, but there it is. That's our final shape. I'm not going to try to put eye sockets in this like I did in my prototype. And um, I'm just going to, you know, when I go to paint it, I'll, I'll glue eyes onto it and then epoxy over it. And I think that'll be nice enough. I think this will work good. I like that shape. I like that it's a, a bigger head than, uh, than most conventional jigs. Uh, but still, it's very thin. And uh, there's not a lot of mass to it. So I don't think it'll be too terribly heavy. So we're going to start making the mold now. I'm going to show you. Uh, yes, we're going to use our friend Plaster of Paris for that, uh, of course. Uh, but we're going to have to... Uh, do a little uh, working with it compared to normal. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, it's everyone's favorite time. Plaster of Paris. That's right. I'm using the same technique for this too, to make uh, swim jigs. So let's set up our mold box here. Got to make sure that it fits our mold master. I think we're going to put it in kind of like that. And... Not good find it here we can use that as a sprue but we don't need anything that big of course it's all the way at the bottom of my cup but uh, this is just a little piece of a um, when you get the kids medication it comes with a little injector that made a nice little sprue for for this guy right here so I'm going to uh, glue this to this here and uh, and then make sure that that's going to fit in the mold box. But while we're waiting for that, well, before I do that, rather, let me skip ahead here. So what I was saying is you know, we kind of got to do a little special thing with our with our mold box. And um, what that is, is once we pour this plaster, we have to let it set up longer than we normally would. Um, and I don't know who we is in this scenario. I have to let it set up longer than I normally would because the... Um, this jig head mold master is very heavy and not buoyant. And if you just do it when it's liquid, it's just going to sink right through it. And that's subpar and not ideal. So we want to make sure that it's going to sit there properly. Petroleum jelly down at the bottom of this so that the plaster of Paris doesn't go on the other side of it. That should be good. So we want to make it a little thicker so that it's not going to uh, sink down. So we're going to make up that plaster right now. Probably already too much water. Let's pour some out, actually. We want this to be like peanut butter consistency, not like pancake batter. Thank you, Dat Plaster of Paris. What a great product. Of course, I'm not sponsored, but I wouldn't mind it. Just kidding. We're nowhere near anything like that, guys. Don't worry. Okay, that's pretty thick. Don't let me forget, my regular viewers, I still need the uh, locators. I'll put the cup out here with my locators in it so I don't forget, but I still need the locators for this one. Okay, so the locators will sit on this, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I go to put this guy in here right now, so it's starting to sink in. Yes, it is floating on top. It's not a magic trick. But as time goes by, see that? Just any little bit, and it sinks right in. So subpar. Now for my next trick, I'll get it out of there. So we want to wait till it's even harder than that. More set up, more congealed. before we go and uh, try to do that. So. so as I was saying, I gotta glue this, uh, I have to glue this onto it and then figure out the best way to get this here into the mold, um, into the mold box. So ideally it would be like this, but I think we're just a little too long for that. No, nope. I think we can make that work. Okay, let me glue that on. Got it. That took an inordinate amount of time. But thank you for sticking with me through it. So uh, on these ones here, a little pro tip for you too. 
you can fill this with petroleum jelly this uh our, our what's going to be our screw little thing for the mold master that way the plaster doesn't go in there as well okay just like that so again this is our mold master upside down it's going to sit in here like so and i think that was the right consistency because it hasn't sunk sunk in yet so let me turn this around so I can see what's going on there. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. Let's get it butted right up against that. Put in a locator and a locator. Whammo. So we'll call that done. I'm going to let that harden up and then pour the other side. All right, guys. Our mold is ready to go to put the second half of it on. So let's move our like a friend all. Over here, and we're going to remove these locators. Hopefully, there we go. And we got a little sloppy, but it'll be all right. We need to reload this petroleum jelly running low here in the regular shop. Okay, I think we got it. Fresh box, it's always a fun day. So, unlike the other side. This one does not have to be as thick, so the consistency just has to be ready to pour, so more like the pancake batter side. Again, we're not trying to float a uh, two pieces of metal and a block of uh, super grown baking soda on it, so as long as it's ready to go and mix thoroughly, then you'll be fine. I'm trying lately to pour a thin layer on which that isn't really, to try and make sure that the bubbles are out of it. And I've been having moderate success in that endeavor. I know the silicone guys out there do this. Plaster doesn't work quite like silicone, but close enough. But we'll tap this around a little more, get these bubbles out. And as I said in the first video, my molds are expertly engineered with a tipping point to uh, get bubbles out. And if you believe that, and we don't need to fill it up the rest of the way. So I'm just going to keep working these bubbles out, and then uh, we'll be back when that thing is ready to come out of the mold. So it looks like we are all set to go. We have a mold. Let's unbox it, shall we? How about you get the magnetical thing to put the screws in, guy? Oh, nice and warm. We're going to let that sit a little bit. This guy's still, or just, I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, kids. Okay, let's take this mold apart. There we go. Okay. That is good looking. This mold still has to dry a lot before we're going to pour lead in it. And um, yeah, as I said before, you want this thing to be, and I still can't get half. Look at this. Holy smokes, people. Look at that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's, there's enough meat on it for sure. But like I said, I'm going to leave this in here. You can look at all the moisture coming out of it still. But uh, we're going to let this dry. So that uh, when it's ready to go, uh, this lead will not sputter and spurt at us. It will make all sorts of nasty noises and hurt you if you don't wait long enough. So we're going to let this dry out thoroughly. So Okay, when last we spoke, the regular guy had opened the mold, and it looked like it was pretty good. This did sink down in here, so we're going to have to do a little excavating. But that should not affect over here, uh, which is the meat and potatoes of this mold. So we're going to use our friend all and try and work this stuff out of here. That was the easy part. Using the nail with these little uh, ribs on it may not have been the brightest idea I've ever had. It might stick in there a little bit more than I wanted it to. I'm just using regular things around the regular shop here. We're moving it. Looks like we're about to lose a big chunk right there, but... Good, we got that hook up. I'm going to save this piece in case we got to fill this back in over here. In fact, you know what? We'll just do it anyway. 
on the on the fly repair, right? Because Plaster of Paris is very forgiving. And it will forgive us for our little blunder here. That puzzle piece back in. That one's a little harder to get in there. That should be all right. But we got our jig head uh, mold master out. If I use this again, I might grind down these little bits here so it's not quite as difficult to get out. I was hoping that would, uh, you know, kind of keep it floating, but um, the weight had the opposite effect. But we still got a really good mold, I think. And our lead is hot. So we are all ready to rock and roll. Put this hook down in it. So this is the same brand of hook here, but it's a little tight because I think because it just sunk down ever so slightly. But that's no worries. We're just going to kind of go around here, hone out this. <sighs> Try not to get too far into there. Into the, uh, <sighs> we don't want to mess with our nice shape here. Because I really like how that came out. All right. That actually, if you could, I don't know if that picked it up, but you could kind of hear it snap into place. So that was really good. So the only other thing I was thinking of adding to this was a little line right here to put in uh, a small piece of wire to act as a um, soft plastic hook grabber thingy. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> If I put in a little bit of wire right here, I can probably um, bend it up into a hook like I did on these jigs here. I actually included that in the mold, but I didn't like that bend. I wanted it to be a sharper bend, and I think if I do it straight, once it's out, I can epoxy it to the hook and then get a nice sharper bend to it, if that makes sense. So we'll carve this out a little bit to make the... Uh, bit we're looking for here. Nope, we got to carve that out some more because it's interfering with where that hook is. <sighs> rookie mistake. But then again, I am a rookie, so. Okay, looks like we got proper fitment. Now, last thing we need to do is add our nail so that we have our weed guard slot or hole. Okay, so we're going to take this and put it on a clamp and then I'll meet you over there at the lead pot at the lead pot nice and hot first time how about you put it under it Jeez. no guarantees that the first one will work see what we got a little bit of flashing but I think that's okay is it not going to burn me to death. I think it looks like a jig head to me. So we can see right here, I might want to carve out, came out of it this way. So it looks like right here, the lead really didn't get into that, to that spot right there. Right, if it was sitting like that. So that could be that this wire was sitting down a little bit, but I'm actually not upset at that at all. Yeah, it didn't really fill in this piece here, and I can see now my probably my mistake was that this the lead comes in this way, and this little port or this little part rather is higher than where the lead is. So I might try pour more next time, let it flow a little longer. But all in all, guys, uh, we're going to get a usable jig head out of this. I bet you. And um, and that looks good. Look at that. Let's set it up again. It's like operation. Except it doesn't buzz at me. That would have been nice. That would have been a nice feature, though. The fitment is good. I don't know why, quite why we got so much flashing out of this one. There really wasn't any flashing out of the other mold. So I'll try to tighten this down pretty good. I don't want anything to crack, but I'll, I'll put a little more mustard on it. But back over to the lead pot. Round two. I keep looking at this bolt right here, or the bottom of this nut, rather, and I keep confusing that for the port. And I'm wrong. Okay, we'll fill it right up to the top this time. So this one didn't get to sit as long as my last one did. So there's still probably a little bit of moisture left in this, which is why it's bubbling like it is. But 
I think it's all right. I think we'll do fine. Much, much better. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Looks like we had a little bit of the mold break off there. We'll have to take it out and see what happened there. No flashing at all. Got up into that little spot that we were talking about there a little bit. Good stuff. Okay, round three. I'm in much better luck with this than I did with the uh, flashy swimmer video. Uh, well, the manufacturing process of that, I guess. Okay, let's see how this third one came out. Look at that, guys. Man, they're getting better the more I pour it. That one's pretty warm. So we'll let those cool down. Sheesh, not bad. I'm impressed with how that worked. This was super easy, guys. Every single buddy that wants to try this, every one of my regular viewers watching this could do this right here, I'm telling you. This was uh, no talent right here. Oof, man, easy. Easy peasy. Okay. That one's still a little toasty. It wants to fall out. It's like twisted pretty good. I just can't hold on to it. It's hot. Ah, hot potato. Okay. I could wait. You know, but where's the fun in that? Jeez, there's like barely any trimming on these things. Man, this is just easy to do, guys. I am not this good. I promise you. I'm calling that one done. That looks so good. Just do a little test fit here. These are those weed guards I ordered. Look at that. Fits right down in it. That's going to be perfect. I might have to trim it a little. But, love it. What do you think, little man? I think that's so cool. So cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those do fit right down in it. Jeez, look at that. And I thought those were brushes that you were making your own homemade paint brushes. You're a silly goose. Cool jig heads. Thank you. It's important to really make sure that you wash up really well after this. Too. You can see my gray, all that gray on my fingers there, guy. Is that, is that lead? That is lead, yep. That's lead <clears throat> residue. No bueno. You don't want that in your Cheerios. <laughs> no way. Okay. I think those came out pretty good. We're going to clean up this mess. We'll get on to the next step. I got my jig heads drying on the rotator here. I put a couple coats of white paint on them just as a primer so we can paint them up. But a little thing I do here is my lead pot is cooling off and uh, it's still pretty hot. And I put these guys over it so it kind of, uh, you know, cooks them, cooks the paint onto it. So helps them dry faster. You can put more coats on them quickly. Make sure they're uh, really secure though or else they'll land down in your lead pot and, you know, start a uh, fire. So we're set up in the paint booth here, and um, I want to do this one like a sunfish pattern. So uh, we'll do a little bit of orange down here, a little bit of blue, and uh, try to do the rest like a green. See if we can't get some stripes in it. But um, I might do the whole thing over like, uh, I don't know, maybe kind of like a yellowy color first. So many angles on this jig head. Okay. I'm gonna let that cook for a minute. So this one I'm trying to do another like a, a crawfish type pattern. So I was kind of leery to tell you guys the color of patterns I wanted to go with because uh, then I'll probably screw it up and I'll have to change it. So I didn't want to commit, you know, <laughs> but uh, I don't have a fear of commitment anymore. I am going to uh, try to go with the crawfish pattern for that one. Screwed that up already. I should have done the stripes first. Always do the stripes first. You try not to move your stencil around when you're doing the stripes, but that's acceptable. Yeah, you want to do the stripes first and then you can kind of uh, fade them in where need be. That is my basic throw-down crawfish pattern. It's not terribly detailed, but a jig head is small, so you kind of have to sacrifice the, uh, the good detail for the space you have. I know, I'm sure there's people out there that can make an amazing paint job on a uh, jig head they just carved out of plaster of Paris and super glue and baking soda, but this is what I get. 
Okay, back on the attempted a sunfish pattern. Please bear with me. Don't move the stencil. Okay, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead and see where we're at there. Let us reveal the scale pattern. Let's see how bad we did. We need to really get another piece of scale stuff. This one's looking pretty raggedy. Okay, it's not terrible. I think we can work with that. Wowzers. I have done way worse with way less and way more in the recent past. Okay, final touches on the bluegill. And we're going to quit while we're ahead. <laughs> Stop there before you ruin it, regular guy. Okay, with the rest of the blue, we're going to do <clears throat> a customary shad pattern. Have to do it. It's mandatory on this channel. A regular shad pattern. Blue scales, our chartreuse, and we'll do a little bit of silver on the belly. And that, friends, will be that. Okay, a little silver sparkle sparkles on the bottom. Airbrush is starting to get a little clogged up here. Probably do for some cleaning after all this. We'll call that dish. Now let's spray more paint. All right, that's done. I swear. Okay, paint jobs are done. Now we got to put some eyes on them. I think that sunfish pattern came out all right. I wouldn't have been upset if it was a little greener, you know. But, hey, whatever. I don't think the bass will notice. And uh, we got our little shad pattern here. We did put a shad dot on it so they know that it's a shad. We don't want confusion in the bass world. Okay, here's the eyes that I picked out for these lures here. This one's got a lot of reds going on in it. Five millimeter eyes. If I could lift this up, that would be helpful. And uh, we got this one right here. I thought that matched pretty well. And for our shad, we got this guy right here. I'm going to get these stuck on, and I'll show you what we got. Eyes are on. Not 100% symmetrical, but I think they came out pretty nice. Matches, you know. That's it, you know, because fish are really into things that match. They really care that much. This definitely isn't made for the fishermen and not the fish. Definitely none of that going on here. But that's half the fun of this, guys. Just a regular guy like me being able to uh, make lures and patterns and styles that he wants that I uh, can't afford and shouldn't be wasting money on supporting his family. Okay, next step here, uh, we're going to clear coat these dogs and uh, and get the weed guards in them. We're going to use our friends JB and Weld, 5-Minute Epoxy. These are small enough. I am going to break my own rule. And I'm going to try to do all three with one batch. This could end in utter chaos and complete and abject failure. But I'm familiar with both of those things. So I thrive in those environments. Stop staring at it. Get working. <laughs> You're on the clock, guy. Can we do it? Still flowing pretty good, and looks like we got enough for this. I don't know if you're like this. I'm always one of those people I'm suspicious when things are going too easy. Must be my naturally sunny disposition. And positive outlook on life. Okay, enough about me. Let's get our weed guards. I know those are hanging off camera. I just have them so they can drip if need be where they need to drip. Now I filled this little void here with uh, the juice, so that's stuck in there now, whether it likes it or not. On my uh, first prototypes, I actually painted it on there, and I think it went up too far, so I think it may have made those weed guards too stiff. Hopefully this won't suffer the same fate, but it's okay. We can remelt them and do it all over again. Okay, guys, here is the finished product. So this is my sunfish with my uh, homemade trailer on it. I think I came out pretty good. This was, uh, I was able to get a skirt here that kind of matched my stripe pattern. So, because it's all about matching skirts, right? Sure. So, still ugly. my regular editor here helped me with the matching. <laughs> this is my, uh, this is my red uh, crawfish pattern here for uh, spring which if you live in the south is uh, not that far away, believe it or not. 
So um, I got my twin tail on it, the homemade twin tail that I make. And I um, thought that came out pretty nice. And here is my customary have to do it mandatory shad pattern, right? So we've got our uh, blue and chartreuse, silver on the bottom, and uh, silver little uh, swim shad down here at the bottom. So we're just going to have to go uh, sneak into my uh, neighbor's backyard and see if we can't test them out in the pool. So there they are. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you guys like them. You could try out my little uh, shad swim jig here. Nice flapping action on the tail. Looks like it's swimming a little sideways. We may have to work on the design, but it'll definitely catch fish. Okay. okay, here's that crawfish one with the twin tail. Let's see how that guy does. Oh, let's see if we can make it over the cover. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Looks like we're having a little trouble with the uh, swimming because of the weight distribution. But, so that may come with a redesign. But all in all, I think it'll be okay. Okay. Okay, so here's that sunfish pattern. Uh, that trailer actually went pretty well with it, I think. I think we did okay. So let's see how that guy goes. So this one's kind of swimming upside down, it looks like. But I guess if it's supposed to be an unhappy fish, then that'll be all right. But that tail flaps rather nicely. Oops, hold on. Oh. Tail flaps nice. It's not too heavy. Feels like it's uh, just over a quarter ounce. Okay. All right, so this is the original one that I made, the original prototype here. Um, in the shad pattern, uh, the clearer water shad pattern, and that's the paintbrush handle trailer cut down to fit this jig. So uh, let's see how that guy does. Oh, no. Look at that. That that one actually swims nice and straight and perfect, nice up and down, straight up and down like it's intended. Not well, there's it spins around just as I said that. But. All in all, very happy with it. These will catch fish for sure. Let's see if we can go over the cover. Yay, no problem at all. He's really smart. Yeah, nice flappy tail. Swimmy looking fish. You can make this thing look like it's nice and injured. It's a flat. Alright, guys. I think we're all done here. Okay, regular viewers, journey's completed here. Project Swim Jig is uh, is done. I can't believe, and I hope you understand how easy this is to do yourself. I made this mold master. You know, it took me a little bit just to uh, shape it the way I wanted, but you know that was a lot of fun. And in all honesty, you know this prototype may not work. Um, there may be some tweaking going on. This may have been a little too tall, this section right here. I did notice when it swam, there's actually more lead up here than down here. So it did tend to fall to the side uh, or swim upside down. But, you know, uh, such is the case. It's so inexpensive and easy to do that I can make a, a couple more of these and keep tweaking them. And uh, I really won't be into it for too much more money. But I was just really happy with how these patterns came out. It was real fun to do, you know, um, be creative and come up with these colors and, 
and patterns and whatnot myself. Um, you know, I, I like that how that bluegill came out. I just happen to have the skirt that kind of matched that color. Uh, these two shad patterns here, if I could make it look nice <laughs> for you. This one uh, in particular, the, just the coloring on the head uh just came out real nice this is absolutely going to catch fish but again you know this prototypes I, you know i don't know if the, if the weed guard is positioned properly it's definitely going to be weedless but <laughs> will it be so weedless that i can't hook a fish it remains to be seen so but uh but this is what i was looking for actually um i wanted a shad pattern swim jig that actually looked like in the size of the head of a shad so um these came out nice. I, I, I just, I'm, I don't know. I was real pleased with how it worked. So um, I'm going to keep tweaking them. You know, I want to try to make them into a chatterbait as well and make my own ones of those. So uh, let me know if there's anything you want to see me try to do with this technique. Um, if there's any uh, questions you have about it, please leave it down in the comments. We're approaching 500 subscribers, guys. I just can't believe this. Thank you so much for that. Truly appreciate it. It's been so encouraging uh, just to have this little outlet out here in the shop to uh, to work and, and uh, work with my wife and kids and just to, uh, you know, get to explore all these uh, other lure making tricks. So if you have questions or comments, concerns, please leave them down in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. I know the, the little guys are, I don't know why they're over there, but, you know, they're going to give you their little message here at the end. It really does help. It's really encouraging and it helps the channel grow. Um, maybe we can make this into something bigger or maybe not, you know. So, but again, thank you for your time. Have a great day. Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs>